Got it? It attaches to everything. <clears throat> so what if you wanted to, to sell your car in order to pay the lien, but the lien is on the car? Can you, can you not do that? Okay. Not if the lien, not if the sales price doesn't clear the lien. It works. Okay, but if it does, like then you could. I mean, let's say I put a 10 grand on your free and clear BMW that's mm -hmm. worth $50,000. That sale would work just like the house. The guy would give yeah. you 50. <clears throat> You would have to give me 10, so then I would release my judgment against you, so the guy would own the BMW free and clear, and you walk away with the 40 grand, I get my 10. That's how it ensures that I get paid. These liens are the protection. They are a future interest in ownership. And I put it on everything you own to protect me, to make sure that you, in fact, pay me the 10 grand the judge says you owe me. And once it gets paid, then I release it on all of the others. Do you remember we talked about the Liz Pendens? The Liz Pendens is the precursor to this lawsuit. I have heard that you have got a BMW. Um, let's do it differently. I've heard that you've got a BMW that's worth 15,000 and you owe nothing on it. I'm gonna change that number. Let's change that number. Make it more understandable. You've got a BMW that's free and clear for $9,000. I don't want you to hear through a grapevine that I'm going to sue you for $10,000. So I contact my attorney before we go to court. And I said, look, here's what I want to do. I want to sue this person for ten grand. I think they owe me money. And the attorney says, okay. Well, I'll do a search. So he goes out and does the search and finds everything in, in your name. And he comes back to me and goes, hey, look, they've got a BMW that's free and clear. So they file a Liz Pendens. And I told you then it was a surprise attack because what I don't want you to do is hear that Raymond is coming after you so you go out and transfer the title of your BMW into your husband's name, and now I don't have that to attach. Do we get it? That's what the Liz Pendens does. All of a sudden you wake up one morning and go, oh, I had a, <clears throat> I had a dream Raymond's gonna sue me. I better sell my car so he can't get it. And you go down to the BMV and you go, hey, I want to sell this. Here's the title I want to transfer. And they're going to go, time out. Raymond's already filed a lawsuit against you. There is a Liz Pendens against you. The general. In general. We cannot transfer to this BMW. Free and clear. Because there's a lawsuit pending. So now we go in front of the judge and the judge says, Raymond, you're wrong. They don't owe you money. I say, oh, darn. The Liz Pendens comes off and now you can sell your BMW for nine grand because there's no lien against it. Or the other side of that coin, the judge says, yes, Raymond, you are correct. They owe you 10 grand. So now what happens that Liz Pendens actually converts to become a lien for $10,000 and you have minus $1,000 in equity in this car. It's worth nine. You've got a judgment against you. I attach
I attach my lien to your car because the Liz Pendens converts to a lien. If I lost, the Liz Pendens would in fact go away. All right. Now, if that's not a big enough kick in the ding ding, watch this. Not only does this judgment block you from selling any of your toys, it also goes against you personally. So you decide, hey, I wanna go buy a new Corvette and the new Corvette is 60 grand and GMAC says, Raymond, we will loan you $60,000 to buy the new Corvette. And then all of a sudden, they run your title work and a lawsuit with a judgment shows up for $10,000. They're going to go, wait a minute, that lawsuit for 10 grand was dated last month. So it is actually the first lien against you. If we loaned you $60,000 on that car, you actually have judgments or liens of 70 grand and the car is only worth 60. We are not going to loan you the money to buy this new Corvette. So in essence, my judgment has blocked you from selling your toys, but it's also blocked you from buying as well. It's also blocked you from buying as well. All right. <clears throat> Questions? Good, thumbs up. All righty then. So that is the equitable portion of the lien. There's also the other side that we've talked about. Remember, it's always involuntary. We have the equitable portion, which is the judgment. There's also a statutory portion, which is a law. That is the inheritance tax. We're not going to really talk a lot about it here. When you inherit something, there will be an inheritance tax that comes with it. And that is a law. So it's the statutory portion. The funny thing is there have been plenty of properties that I have sold in my career for people that have inherited that property but the only way they could afford to pay the tax was to sell the property that caused the tax to begin with. I laugh. There's an old story by a author named O. Henry. And the story was called Gift of the Magi. Anybody? The story of the lady who had the long hair and her husband had that really cool pocket watch. He sold his pocket watch to buy her a comb for her hair. And she cut all her hair off to sell it to buy him a watch fob. So neither one had what they needed because they got rid of the product that actually benefited. That's, I don't know, I'm twisted. I get it. I understand that. That's what this reminds me of. I had, there was a guy that inherited like a $1.1 million strip center, but the taxes that came with it because of the inheritance were so big that we had to sell the strip center to pay the damn tax that came with it. He'd have been better off to not inherit the property because he had to go through some heartache of selling it. 
So it's a state law. That's the statutory involuntary general lien. All right. There are municipal liens that get placed upon you. This actually, I think, has just changed in Indiana. It used to be that the water company would place a lien on the property if the tenant didn't pay their water bill. That's why you used to see a lot of landlords would pay the water bill because they didn't want the tenant to put a lien on their property. They would pay it to make up, make sure. I think they've recently changed that here in Indiana that now that water bill would go with the person and not necessarily the residents. There's a bail bond lien. You need to bail somebody out of jail. You have got equity in your house. You can actually get a lien to get the money from the bail bondsman and he will put a lien on your property, just like a second lien. And when you don't repay him, he'll put a lien on your property. So when you sell it, he'll get paid then. I like it when people don't really know that. When someone goes, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that. Like my brother. No, I'm just kidding. IRS lien. Here's one that'll fool you. Where do you think the IRS comes in? They actually play by the rules, believe it or not. If you've got two liens on your property, they'll come in third. Unlike the taxes, remember we talked about the taxes? They will wipe off all the other liens and ta-da, they become first lien by eliminating everything else. Now, I'm telling you that the IRS eventually will come after you, just like everybody else. But they actually will come in at third if you truly are third. Okay? Any questions about liens? It was a little in-depth, but we have touched on these before. They are, in fact, an encumbrance, just like an easement is. Only the easements were non-monetary, and they run with the land, where these liens are monetary in nature, and they get paid off when the deal closes. Remember in the general warranty deed, the covenant against encumbrances says, I will remove all of the liens that I can. The easements, I can't take off. But I can pay my mortgage off. I'll pay that judgment of $10,000 off. I'll bring my taxes current. So that's what we're saying. I'll bring all of the encumbrances, covenant against encumbrances, I will bring them all off of the ones I can. And this is the second type of encumbrance. The first one was called an encumbrance and this one's called a lien. All right. Any questions about liens? They are a future interest in ownership not actual ownership, just like the other encumbrances. An easement is an interest to use your property, not actual ownership. Someone shares your driveway, they have an interest in your property. They don't own it. Same thing. Bank has an interest in your property. The bank does not own your property. They just have an interest in it. All right. Any questions on chapter 15? All right, going, going, gone.